instructs us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence of singing to know ye that the Lord, he is God. For it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercies are everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and honor the Lord. Come on and worship God. Hallelujah. 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 As we stand to our feet, we lift our opening hymn of praise. Hymn selection 437. Hymn selection 437. Come, kumbaya, Lord. Kumbaya, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. Come on, let's lift this to the church. 437. given us another day, another opportunity where we can come together on a brand new Sunday morning to lift up the name of Jesus, to exalt him and give him praise, give him glory and honor. Anybody thank the Lord for one more day? One more day. Come on, lift it for us one time. One more.
keep that button right there. Don't you move. Y'all stay you're in your seats. Don't you move. Because the Lord is going to come on in. So we welcome you. And we want you to stay just for a little Don't move. God bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. And now find Pastor. Pastor Brent A. Brown. It's going to fire it up, stir it up, and pierce your heart. Let the word rock with you. Amen, amen, and amen. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have gathered this morning to rejoice. And we ought to be glad that the Lord has given us a new day to celebrate his name and to give what's due unto him. We know that it's raining on the outside. Ain't no secret. But the Son of God continues to shine down in our soul, down in our lives, and for this we should be eternally grateful. Amen. Amen. I want to lift a few harvest happenings on this morning, a few harvest happenings this morning. This Friday, October the 7th, 8 p.m., the young adults of Greater Harvest and any other young adults that desire to share with us are going bowling at Bolero. The cost is $37. Once again, this is for young adults ages 16 to 39. Come on out and share with us. If by chance you have not paid or you still want to go, Please see Minister Campbell, Brother Larkins. Those two are here today. Either one of these gentlemen will be able to help you and assist you with any of that as we go this Friday. Monies are due immediately to Bolero as we share in fun and fellowship. Once again, that cost includes your bowling, shoe rental, uh, as well as your food, unlimited soft drinks, and all of that good old stuff. Amen. Amen. Ladies, 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 inviting you to join the women's ministry on Saturday, November the 5th. Saturday, November the 5th for a trip to see Joyce Myers and shopping at the outlets. That'll take place in Pennsylvania, Saturday, November the 5th. Bus leaves here, 6.30 a.m. It'll return right back here on Saratoga Street, 6.30 p.m. The cost for that is $45, and you'll have a good old time if you share together with the women's ministry. See any of our women's ministry leaders? Uh, Sister Cheryl Moore is here. You can see Sister Linda Garnett, see Sister Valerie Schofield. Any of those ladies will be able to assist you with any questions or your payment so that that might be handled. Amen? Throughout the month of October, we celebrate and we give awareness to breast cancer. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There's some literature downstairs on the information table if you don't know. And I want to celebrate at this time all of our breast cancer survivors who have survived and are living testimonies about what the Lord can do. Amen. Listen, if you're a breast cancer survivor and you're not ashamed, just stand to your feet so we can celebrate you. We honor the Lord and we celebrate all you ladies and others that may not even be physically here. If you're the breast cancer survivor and you're in the virtual sanctuary, just go on and type in I survived. If you are a breast cancer survivor in the virtual sanctuary, whether you are on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, type that in the chat. I survived. Type that in the chat right now. If you are a virtual worshiper this morning and you survived breast cancer, type that in boldly. I survived. What a joy it is to celebrate all of the ladies who have survived on this side. And we honor even those who have succumb and conquered on the other side. Amen. Amen. October is not only Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but we do this month also celebrate Clergy Appreciation Month. Across this country, we celebrate all clergy, not just pastors, but those who are clergy, answer the clarion call, associate ministers, and the like. And so if you are associate minister here at the Greater Harvest Church, I and the Greater Harvest family, we honor you today. Can we just celebrate and honor God for all of the clergy here at Greater Harvest Church? Amen. And so all month long, we'll be in celebration 
and we'll be thanking them. A simple thank you goes a long way. And so encourage them by giving them your thank you and just a sign of appreciation using those two words. Thank you. Amen. Don't forget every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 p.m., we celebrate noonday worship. We have host noonday worship. It's in person and in the virtual sanctuary. So if you're able to come on out noon, noon days on Wednesdays, 12 noon to 1 p.m., come on out. We have a host of other individuals that are not even members, but they are called what we call our extended family. And so we thank God for our extended family. Every Wednesday, come on out. We have some coming from work in the area and different different ways and so share with us every Wednesday 12 noon to 1 p.m. an hour of worship a great time we have every Wednesday this past Wednesday we jumped back into our evening Bible study via Facebook live and the conference call line and I pray that you enjoyed and had a wonderful time as we kick back off into Bible study and so join us every Wednesday at 6 45 p.m. for Bible study every Wednesday 6 45 p.m. sharp I make sure we'll have the line open and all at 6 40 so that at 6 45 we can get started amen amen and so join us every Wednesday kick off your weekend every Friday at 7 a.m. on the prayer conference call line and join us in prayer we don't tarry long but from 7 a.m. to 7 20 a.m. we come together to celebrate the Lord's the the prayer line we come together to pray unto God and give him what's due unto his name kick off our weekend in prayer what a great time that we have every Friday morning at 7 a.m. and encourage somebody to get on the line with us tell a friend tell a neighbor tell a family member if you're home put that phone on speakerphone let the whole house get some prayer amen we don't tarry long but we pray strong and we're excited that we do that every uh, Friday morning at 7 a.m. I want to support our own, uh, our own elder Kelly Wade is hosting a conference. And I want, I want her to come and share briefly about that. And if those of you who would hear and able to go and support, you do so. Come on, Elder Wade. God be the glory. Um, this conference is about um, I am beautiful. And the conference is basically about the inner soul, not the flesh, but the inside. Um, beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. We know that. We put so much emphasis on the outer beauty, but what your but our enter. What about your soul? Learning to see the beauty in your soul is exactly why God called me to do this I Am Beautiful conference that I am extended to you all. That what is about. The conference is holding space for individuals to be loved on emotionally, spiritually, and even physically. We hold space for those who need a reminder that you are beautiful. Still beautiful, always have been, and always will be, because it's your spirit. This journey God called you to explore is the very one that makes you beautiful. Your individual story has been beautifully written. We do have live vendors and, you know, some questions if you have some. To discuss your spirit is sure to soar beyond the limitations of your mind. As my oldest daughter would say, you are limit limitless in God's eyes. If you'd like more information regarding this event, please see me at the end of service. It's very special. This was given to me by God. I sat on this for seven years and have not moved. The Lord said, I give you six months. I give you six months to get it off the ground. October the 15th is my six months. 
If you please share this with me and help me birth the vision that God gave me, it would be greatly appreciated because we all are beautiful in God's eyes. Regardless of what man says, God said, I made you in my image. And that is all we need. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Those ladies who wish to support that conference, it is a one-day conference on Saturday, October the 15th. What's the location? You're fine. Just tell, tell me. 8800 Philadelphia Road is the location, and the time is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost of the conference is $40 per person. That includes your lunch and all that's happening at the conference, and breakfast and lunch that'll be taking place at that conference on that Saturday. Amen. And so if you wish to go attend, see Elder Kelly Wade immediately following service, and you'll be able to get your ticket to support the I Am Beautiful Conference. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray for everybody. Support everybody, all of our family, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a great thing to be able to be a blessing to somebody else and in turn receive what you need to receive from our great God. Amen. Well, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. It's giving time in God's house. Let's prepare ourselves for our time of giving unto God, our tithe and our offering. Those of you that are worshiping online, there is some information being placed on the screen right now, this very second. You may be able to sow your seeds of love and sacrifice unto God. Even though you're not physically here in the building, you can use Givelify, you can use Cash App, you can use Text to Give, or you can mail it into the church office. All that information is on your screen right now that you may be able to worship God through giving while you may not physically be in our Father's house. We still worship through giving. Those of us that are sharing physically here, we can give using those methods as well. Or traditionally, by placing our offering into the basket right here to my left, to your right. Let's stand as we can pray over our offerings. Let's pray over our offerings, our gifts unto God. Gracious Father, we thank you for the means to give, the privilege to sow seed into your house. We pray, God, that you would bless our seeds, allow them to go down and grow into the fertile grounds of this ministry, bringing forth fresh fruit in its due season. Return it some 30, some 60, some 100 fold is our prayer. And we declare, my seed is blessed. My seed is blessed. Come on, make that declaration. My seed is blessed. Amen. You're under the leadership of our ushers on this morning.
Glad I'm standing on the solid rock. Glad that the one I'm able to lean on will never fail or falter. Will never let me fall, but will be right there with me every step of the way. I don't think I'm by myself this morning. No, I don't think I'm by myself this morning. Anybody else try to make you know them? Anybody else stood on him and you found out how strong he is? Anybody else ever had to lean on him and to depend on him? And you found out he was able to hold you up? You found out he was able to keep you from falling? God, I thank you. How great is our God. How great is our God that he's more than able to sustain us and keep us in every aspect of our lives. And for this, we ought to be grateful. Any grateful people in the house of worship this morning, I said for this, we ought to be grateful. All praise be unto God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, our precious guide and leader, the Holy Spirit, that continues to comfort us and guide us into all truth. What a joy it is to share together on this Lord's Day. Thank you as we continue to celebrate him in every aspect of our lives. Over the last four weeks, this being the fourth week, we have been navigating through our sermon series entitled, Ready to Receive. Yes, these last four weeks, I pray, has been a blessing to you as it indeed been a blessing to me. I don't, I don't just preach the word, but I try to eat the same word that the Lord gives me to preach. And so don't you ever think that I'm just preaching to you and that the Lord ain't talking to me in return because just like he preaches through me, he preaches to me as well. And I pray that this word over these last four weeks have been a sense of encouragement as we all prepare to go higher and further in the Lord Jesus Christ. For this fourth installment, I invite your attention to Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. <laughs> They belong to, to God, to God. They belong to God. They belong to God. All the glory. Honor the praises all day. They 
chapter 35 verse 1 and verse 2 is what I want to highlight for our time of reading. I want to constitute verse 1 through 7 as our framework for this afternoon, but for brevity of time in our focal text, I want to read verses 1 and verse 2. Over these last four weeks, this being the fourth week, we've been dealing with ready to receive. We, on that first, we discussed how we must have faith to receive. Let the church say faith. We discussed how we must be postured to receive. Somebody say postured. Last week we discussed how we must be connected to the right people in the, the right places. Somebody say connections. And today I want to push this a little further as we close it out and bring these four weeks to a conclusion. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1 and 2 is what I want to read on this day. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. I want to talk this morning sermonically from this title, Making Space to Receive. Making Space to Receive. Making Space to Receive. Our Father and our strong God, we say thank you for being so kind unto us. Thank you for showing up right on time. Now, Father, we pray that you bless us as we travel and navigate through your word. 
Father, over these last few weeks, you've been speaking in a strong way. Now, Father, take us even higher today. Move by your spirit. If by chance we feel as though this word is not for us at this very present moment, help us to take it and store it up. Because a time going to come when we're going to need the word. Thank you for your living word that continues to be a light unto our feet. We pray, oh God, that you preach me that this day I stand as a willing and surrendered vessel. Father, use me all you desire. Preach me in this your house. In Jesus' name we pray. And together we declare a man and a man making space to receive. My brothers and sisters, more than 20 years have passed since Jacob has made a vow to God at the place that he has renamed Bethel. 20 years have passed now and a lot has happened, transpired, if you will, during the interim of these 20 years. But more specifically, what has brought us to this place in our text this morning is a strange interaction between Jacob's family and the family at Shechem. You see, in chapter 35 of Genesis, Jacob's daughter is walking through town when a gentleman by the name of Shechem takes lust into Jacob's wife, Jacob's daughter, if you will. This lust resulted into Shechem raping Jacob's daughter. When Jacob receives notification that his daughter was raped, it is then that he waits until his sons come into the house from the field. And it is there that he begins to express their concerns, their frustration, them being upset. I mean, I can only imagine, only imagine what they had to deal with a Father being upset, brothers being upset because their daughter, their, their sister was raped while walking through town. Then Shechem become, becomes so interested and infatuated with Jacob's daughter that he comes to Shechem, he comes to Jacob and his sons and it is there that he begins to try to figure out a way they can exchange daughters. Shechem says to Jacob and her and his sons, he says, how about you take my daughters and I'll take your daughters. Let me marry her. I'll give you my daughters and whatever you ask for, you name the price. Name, name whatever it is you need and I'm going to pay it. I'm going to see to it. So Jacob's sons began to respond and said that if you desire to do this, then all the men of your city have to be circumcised. He goes with it. He goes to the sheep, to, 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 the, to the gate of the town. And when he gets to the gate of the town, he's trying to explain all of this. And all the men agree to be circumcised. All because Shechem wants Jacob's daughter. When he gets to this place where they all have been circumcised, the Bible says that three days have passed. And while all of the men were still sore from their circumcision, that Jacob's sons began to sneak in on all the men and kill all the men of the town by the sword. Jacob is frustrated and flustered. He gets worried and concerned because he's trying to figure out what's going to happen. He says, if all of them band together and come against us, we're going to be outnumbered. Yet, yet, Jacob's sons say to him, well, what do you think we were supposed to do? He raped our daughter. And when, when Jacob's sons began to speak, the greater news is that God began to speak to Jacob. And when God began to speak to Jacob, he begins to give Jacob this list of instructions. He says, Jacob, get up, arise, and go to Bethel. Dwell there and make there an altar unto God. 
The same God that appeared to you 20 years ago when you were running from your, your, your brother Esau. The Bible says that when God gives Jacob these instructions, Jacob in terms begins to give a set of instructions to his household. And to all of those that were attached to Jacob, he says, all right, God told us to go to, go to Bethel. So here's what we got to do. We got to get up. Take all of your strange gods, your idol gods, and get rid of them. Get up and clean yourself. And change your clothes. And the Bible says that these, these people began to give unto Jacob all of their idol gods. He, he buries them under the tree. And they made their way to Bethel where the Lord met them there. I want to suggest my brothers and sisters as we began to unpack this text outlined before us. That many of us can attest just as Jacob and his family. All of those attached to him that many of us have experienced some strange situations in our lives. Some very uneasy moments and seasons on our journey. Where things have happened and we did not quite know how they were going to turn out. Many of you under the sound of my voice can attest that I've been there a time or two. Where I wasn't quite sure exactly what God was going to allow how he was going to allow it and which way the tables would turn in my favor or for my demise and yet God always has a unique way of reminding us that he's more than able to lead us and guide us and direct us along life journey you see, for the case of Jacob and his children, they were uncertain of how things were going to turn. But here's what I love about it. The instructions of God were so concrete and they were so clear to go to Bethel. Now for you, Bethel may just sing like the name of a church somewhere that we've heard a time or two. But here's what God is saying. Go to Bethel. Bethel meaning the place where the spirit of God resides. Bethel meaning the place where we can feel and have encountered the power of God. Bethel meaning the house of God. And the truth be told, my brothers and my sisters, Bethel is not simply a, an, an exact location. Bethel is not just simply uh, held off to a geographical place. But can I tell you, we can experience Bethel at greater harvest. We can experience Bethel in our homes. Right in your kitchen, you can turn your place where you dine into Bethel. Because Bethel symbolizes a, a place where the power and the presence of God resides. And my, I want to submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that where the presence of God shows up, is where you need to be because in the presence of God is where you'll receive what you need. All right, like, let me stop and rewind that thing said over one more time that where the presence of God shows up is where you and I need to be because in the presence of God is where you'll receive what you need. And if you're going to be ready to receive all that God has in store for you, you got to make sure you get to a place where God resides. We got to make sure we journey to a Bethel, a place where we can meet and encounter the presence of the Lord. Because just in case you did not know, or maybe you have forgotten, my brothers and my sisters, uh, but can I tell you in the presence of the Lord is still the fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures are still there forevermore just in case you forgot is in the presence of God that we still can experience the joy and the peace the favor and the grace the understanding and the forgiveness that all of us his children will need to encounter and need to receive can I tell you it's time for you you greater harvest uh, to get to a space of Bethel. Uh, it's time for you uh, to get to a place in God uh, where he showed forth his power.
power and his might and his authority now. Don't think it's strange that it's been 20 years since, since, since Jacob has got to that place of laws that he has renamed Bethel. It was 20 years ago that Jacob had a dream at the place of laws. And when he went to sleep and had that dream, God began to show Jacob a ladder leading from the earth up into the heavens. And when he showed him the vision of the ladder going from the earth up into the heavens, it was angelic hosts coming down the ladder. Yet it was angelic hosts going up the ladder and on the top of the ladder Jacob saw a man that was clothed in all white apparel don't you think that God is trying to take you black to a place that he pulled you from but he's trying to get you to a position that you are vulnerable enough for you to see and receive what you needed the Bible says that Jacob he woke up and then renamed that place Bethel because that is where God met him. Oh, child of God, I come to tell you that there's a place where you first met God. There's a place where you first inhabited the presence of God. There's a place where you first encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a place when you first got the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. There's a place where you are free and liberal in God. There's a place where you did not mind giving of yourself and surrendering your heart unto God. And here's what God is saying that it's time for you uh, to get to the place uh, of Bethel uh, so that you can experience the power of God uh, because where the power of God is uh, you'll have what you need to receive from God oh man if you don't mind helping me preach look at somebody near you and tell them it's time to get to Bethel oh tell them it's time for you to get to Bethel uh, here yet 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 as they were preparing to go, here's, 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 here's Deacon Bratcher with Jacob says in response. He says, uh, uh, before we get there, before we make our way there, before we take this pilgrimage, before we reach Bethel, get rid of your idols. Clean yourself up and change your clothes. He says, yeah, before we get there, Get rid of your idols. Purify yourself. And change. Change your clothes. What? What? How do we? How do we? How do we make space to receive from God? This question I want to wrestle with this morning. How do we? How do we make this space to receive? To receive from God? I want to suggest that we make space to receive by number one. Removing contenders. Removing contenders. Uh, the Bible says that Jacob says to his family, to the, all of those people attached to him that was about to make this pilgrimage, get rid of your idols. Strange gods is how King James paints the picture. NIV says idol gods. I want to suggest that any idols are contenders between you and your God. It was, it was normal during times of antiquity, and I'll even argue it now, that there were people who would place tangible things in their space as idol gods. Let me give you an example. They would, they would place things on their mantelpiece and say, that gives my home peace. They would, they, would, they would place trinkets in their bedroom and say, it helps me sleep at night. They would take tangible things and use these as small keepsake gods to say they protect me. They would have something as the god of sleep and it helped me sleep better at night. They, they would, they would, and it's just like people do today, you know. They, they'll take a dream catcher, hang it over their bed, talking about it's going to protect you from your dreams. They'll, they'll take horseshoes and put it over their door and talk about it's going to bless their house. So on the first day of the year, they walk in their door backwards and, and they eat black eyed peas and they got to have a man to step in the house first before, okay, okay, you know what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that we use and we don't even realize we have idolized it and made it lowercase gods. And here's what Jacob says, anything that's a god to you, get rid of it. 
anything that's a God to you, get it out of here. Before we get to Bethel, don't you be confused that that dream catcher did not keep you in your sleep. It was God. Don't you be confused that that horseshoe over your door did not keep you from, from having fire at night and thieves breaking in in the middle of the night. It was God. It was the hand of God. Don't you think that that little thing on your mantelpiece, that little trinket, that, that necklace you wear around your neck, that gives you peace when you are, it's your good luck charm. Tell me that's going to help me get a new career. If I go on an interview with this good luck charm, it's going to help me get a new career and it's going to bless me in a new... God did it, baby. And here's what Jacob says. Jacob said, get rid of it. Before we get to Bethel, get rid of it. And here's what I love about it. Because if you keep on reading, if you keep on reading, the Bible says at verse 4, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were with their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them. And IV says he buried them under the oak tree. <laughs> How you bury a god? And the gods stay buried. Because <laughs> last time I checked the record, there was another God they thought they killed. There was another God they thought they buried. There was another master they thought wasn't going to get back up. And your Bible says that there's an empty tune right now to this day to prove that my God is alive and alive forevermore. How you hold a God in your hand? My God is too big for me to hold hostage to my hand. He's not tangible enough for me, even though he allows me to see him through the tangible. He's not tangible enough for me to sit there and hold him in my... I can't cradle my God. My God cradles me. I can't lift up my God. My God lifts me up. I can't sit down on my God. My God allows me to sit within him. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And we live in a day and age where people have become attracted and enamored by this stuff. Get rid of it. It ain't going to do you no good. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hope you hear me today. Get rid of it. It ain't going to do you no good thinking that you're going to be saved because you're holding something in your hand. You thinking you'd be saved because you're wearing something around your neck. Thinking you're going to be saved. You ain't going to never have no peace. You ain't going to never have no joy. You ain't going to never have no forgiveness. Can I tell you, a rock can't forgive me. But the rock of ages that was shed his blood for me is the only forgiveness I can ever receive when I cling to him. Oh God, I thank you. Let the church say remove contenders. <laughs> remove con anything that is going to contend between you and your God. Anything that we idolize is a get it out of here. We can't take it with us to Bethel. <laughs> Do you think you're going to take in the presence of God something that you're, that's contending with your attention for your God? Okay. Okay, let me get ready to get out of here. But I feel like talking about Jesus this morning. Do you think for one second you're going to take to in the presence of your God something that you can that's contending between you and your God? Okay, bring, bring, bring your rock to church and see what happened. <laughs> bring, your, bring your Buddha to church and you see what happens. Okay. Bring your necklace to church and lay it on this altar. You see what happened. Let's see. I bet you. I, I bet you, I bet you, I ain't going to feel nothing from that rock. I, I bet you, I ain't going to feel nothing from that necklace. I, I bet you, I ain't going to feel nothing from no Buddha statue. You can stick fruit on, 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 on a fireplace all you want. Ain't nothing gonna, you can yum your ring, get kyo all you want. Can't say, ain't nothing going to happen. It's not in the name of young ring, yang get kyo. It's in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. I feel the Holy Ghost. And every tongue shall confess. That he is Lord. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Don't you get caught up in all this stuff. Child of God, don't you get caught up in all this stuff. No, anything that's an idol, remove it. Remove contenders. He says, he says you make space for God. You make space to receive. When you remove contenders. And for some of us, the contenders are not items, it's people. Okay, let me move from this train a little further. Sometimes the contenders are not items, 
and materialistic things sometimes it's people because some of us have idolized people so much that we trusted in people more than we trust in our God but the last time I checked the record people did not die and save me of my sins God took a piece of himself and he wrapped it in bodily flesh and he made a decision to send it through 40 and two generations to hang and suffer and blah and die and bleed on a cross for the remission of our sin. You ain't die for me. Because sometimes the idol is a person. God, I thank you. But tell somebody, remove the contenders. No, remove the contenders. If we idolize anything you idolize, you got to get it out of here. Before we reach Bethel, tell somebody, get it out of here. Before we reach the place where God is trying to get us to go, get it out of here. Tell somebody one more time, get it out of here. Yes, yes, the Bible testifies that Jacob says, give me your idols. And Jacob buried them in the ground. If we're going to make space, if we're going to make space, if... If we're going to make space for us to receive, we got to remove contenders. But here's what, Jer here's what Jacob says. We're on our way to Bethel. And as we're on our way to Bethel, don't you just rid yourself of the idols. Here's what he said. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Cl clean, clean yourself. He, he says, purify yourself. Now, during times of biblical antiquity, there were things that were considered uh, cleansing rituals. They would take baths as an outward sign that I am being cleaned on the inside. And I know, I know that that's not what we do. It's not how we traditionally move and govern ourselves even now. But I want to suggest that for us, even in 2022, if we're going to purify ourselves, we got to do as Paul says to the church of Colossians in that third chapter. He says, but now you must also rid yourself of such things as these anger and rage malice and slander filthy language from your lips he said don't you lie on each other since you have taken off the old self and with the patience you have the practices you are doing and have put on the new self he says which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of our creator in other words take on our original form like God created us to when he created us, why the Bible says we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, there were some things that we had in our purity of life before we were able to really know what stuff was. And here's what he says, get back to that. Purify your, rid yourself. Get rid of some stuff that's on you. It means to, to clean yourself off, to get the debris off of you. Free yourself of some stuff that's trying to hold you down and hold you back and pull you forward. I mean, pull you back and pull you away from who you have been created to be. And God, let the church say, purify yourself. That means there's some people you got to go back and apologize to and get some stuff right in your life. That means there's some, some stuff you got to stop doing. That means you got to fix your face and fix your lips and cover your tongue, change your language and get yourself together and learn how to get yourself clear of the stuff that's holding you back. Free yourself. Look at somebody and tell them, free yourself. free yourself. Purify yourself. He said, before you get to Bethel, you can't hold on to the stuff that got you dirty. Uh, in other words, I got to get out of here. But in other words, Mother Green, he's what he said. You got to learn how to take a spiritual bath. Okay, you got you to learn how to take a spiritual bath. Some of us use Dove, and some of us use all this smell good stuff. Rock, you use Axe. That's what you use, Axe, and all this stuff that folk be using. But can I tell you this morning, you got to learn how to take a bath in the Holy Ghost. Because some of us clean on the outside, and we're filthy nasty and dirty and rugged down on the inside. You gotta learn how to free your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Free up your spirit. Stop trying to hold you back and hold you down and throw you to the wayside. It's time to clean up. Tell somebody, clean up. Oh God, I thank you. I almost feel a spirit of revival in this house. But can I tell you, I thank God because at the end of the day, he knows how to clean us up. And can I tell you, you can't clean your own self up. 
I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. You can't clean your own self up. It takes submission to the Holy Ghost. They say, Lord, I desire you to be clean. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. There's some under the sound of my voice that have testimonies that they will smoke like a chimney and now they ask God to take the nicotine demon out of their mouth and God them and freeing them. You can't clean yourself up. It takes submission unto God. Church, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Purify yourself. Purify yourself. Purify yourself. Take, tell somebody, take a bath in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, thank you, kind spirit. That's what we need. Take a bath in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, we can use this water all we want. Can I tell you, we got to take a bath in the Holy Ghost. Be bathed and made afresh in Jesus. That's what's going to clean us, cleanse us, cleanse us up and make us new in him. Remove the contenders. He said, if you want to you make space, you want to make space to, to receive. He said, because some of us, we're going to clutter it up. He said, but remove contenders. Purify yourself. I got to get out of here. But here's what he says. Change your clothes. He tells them, you going with me to Bethel? Change them clothes. <laughs> you, you going with me to Bethel? He said, change them clothes. Changing of garments were very important during biblical times. Changing of garments denoted a sense of transformation. Means I'm transforming myself. It's an outward sign of what the Lord's going to do on the inside. I'm going to transform myself. It, it means changing from one nature into another nature. Uh, during times of Bible, during, during times of our text, uh, you, you, you go look at Exodus, write it down in your notes. Look at Exodus chapter 28 and 29. Write that down. Exodus chapter 28 and chapter 29. Write that down somewhere. Read Exodus chapter 28 and 29. It talks about how the Lord gave instructions to Aaron. When Aaron was shifting from just being a regular citizen into becoming a priest in the father's house, God gave specific instructions not just for his inward man, he said, but you got to change some stuff on the outside. It's symbolic for the change that's happening on the inside when you do this change on the outside. He said, this is what you ought to wear. Put a robe on. And you make the robe this color so that the regular citizens would know I ain't just Aaron no more, but I'm the priest. <laughs> and some of us are hanging around the same people wearing the same stuff trying to fit in with the same crowds and here's what they think they think we're the same because we're wearing the same and we're moving the same and we're acting the same and here the, they see no transformation because we're trying to be the same yet change on the inside tell somebody it's okay to change the Lord said tell somebody in this house this next change is about to be Comfortable. It may appear to be uncomfortable, but you got to make sure you're comfortable with the change because some of us have gotten so tied up and tangled up and messed up and what people going to think and what they going to say and how folk going to feel and what it's going to appear to look like. It's okay to change. Tell somebody it's okay to change. I got to move. He said, change your clothes. Change your clothes is a sign of transformation, but it's a sign of separation. A sign of separation. I'm coming from among who I used to be. I'm coming from among where I used to hang. I'm coming from among the places I used to go. I'm coming from among the things I used to say. I'm coming from among the ways I used to act. I'm changing the attitudes that I used to possess. I'm shifting my mind from who I used to be. Trying to be who God has called me to be. Tell somebody it's time to change your clothes. Oh, that ain't the right neighbor. Look at somebody else near you. Tell them it's time to change your clothes. Yeah, take that stuff off. You've been wearing it too long. It's time to change your clothes. And I'm not talking about your stilettos. Don't you get scared trying to think I'm trying to tell you. Now you got to take all that off and wear a habit on your head and close yourself from your neck all the way to your feet. Don't you get nervous. No, 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 no. Don't you get nervous thinking I'm trying to tell you. But there's some spiritual gear you've been wearing. 
and it's time for you to change your spiritual gear. Here's what Paul says. Here's what Paul said. He said, now, after you done did all the stuff you can do, you keep on standing, and here's what you do. Put on your spiritual attire. <laughs> okay, you don't, you, okay, you missed it, okay. Shh, over here. He said, you stand, and here's what you got to do. Put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness. Gird your loins with truth, he said. You put on your shoes, a preparation of the gospel. Put on your spiritual gear. I got to go. He says, he says, uh, if you desire, if you desire to make space to receive, I want to submit to you that you got to make sure you remove contenders. Make sure you purify yourself. He said, before you get to Bethel, and here's what he said, this is all before we get there. <laughs> Tell somebody this is all before we get there. This is before we get there. He said, Then Jacob said unto his household and all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God. Who had answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the day of my distress and was with me in which in the way which I went. Bible says verse 4 and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities. Can I tell you, when you're moving for God, you ain't got to worry about nobody else around you. When you're moving for God, you ain't got to worry about who's going to try to come against you. You see it in verse 4, verse 5, and the journey and the terror of God was upon the cities. They were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Whenever you're running for the Lord, you ain't got to worry about who's going to try to contend against you. Because when you free yourself of the contenders, God got a unique way of protecting you on your journey. Tell somebody keep on running for Jesus. Because when I keep on running for Jesus, he knows how to hedge me in. And the Bible says, so Jacob came to Luz, which is the land of Canaan, that is Bethel. He and all the people that were with him, I'm closing, verse 7, and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because their God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. In other words, I come to tell you greater harvest that we're on our way somewhere. I come to tell you greater harvest that it's time to climb the ladder a little higher. And if you're wondering where we're going, tell somebody I'm on my way to Bethel. If they're wondering where I'm trying to climb to, tell them I'm climbing up the ladder trying to make my way to Bethel. If you're in the virtual sanctuary, you might not be able to high five your neighbor. But type it in the sanctuary. I'm on my way to Bethel. I'm on my way to a place in God where I can experience the power of my master. I'm on my way to a place in God where I can find rest from this weary land. I'm on my way to a place in God where he'll open up the door and give me new access. I'm on my way to Bethel. And if you want to go with me, tell somebody that it's time for us to get right. If you want to go with me, it's time for us to cleanse ourselves if you want to go with me it's time for us to lock arms and arms and get with one another because i'm on my way to a place in god where man can't stop me the devil in hell can't block me i'm on my way to a place in god where he's 
God, open my eyes further. Open up my ears even more. I'm on my way to a Bethel. And I ain't got to make my way on a plane. I ain't got to get there by train. But I've got to be willing to open up my heart and let the Lord in. Good day, great harvest. But it's time for us to climb the ladder just a little higher.
I got to get rid of it. I can't, he can't fill a space that's already full. Let me say it again. He can't fill a space that's already full. If that space is full of idols and filthiness and old stuff and cluttered minds, some people's space is full of themselves. Thank you, kind of spirit. I said, some folks' spaces are full of themselves. Can I tell you, it's cleanup time. I said, it's cleanup time. You know, every season, every season, many of us, we take time to get rid of some old clothes, toss out some old paperwork, Many of us, we like to do that when the seasons are shifting. So when the seasons are shifting, we get rid of some stuff. Some stuff that I know I can't fit no more, or I know I'm not going to wear no more, I back it up. And I get rid of it. Because I know I'm not going to wear it no more. Can I tell you? And then there are some other people whose stuff that they, stuff they know they can't fit no more. No, they're not going to wear it no more. Here's what they do. Here's what they do, Wade. They push it back in the closet. <laughs> they don't get rid of it, but they, but they push it back in the closet. So I just push it to the back of the closet because I know stuff in the back of the closet I don't fool with like that no more. And so there's some people, they push it to the back of the closet, but there's some others who know get rid of it. I ain't going to wear it no more. I'm not going to look at it no more. There's no need for it anymore. Can I tell you, there's some stuff in our spiritual closets we got to get rid of. There's some stuff in our spirit man that we've got to release ourselves of. Some people we got to free ourselves of. Some hangout spots we got to stop going to. Some, some, some some things in our mind that eat up our mental space and clog up space in our mind. Free yourself of it. Free your mind of it. Free your spirit of it. So that you can give space to God to receive. You know, Minister Gary, there are some people I don't talk to no more. I can't. 15, 20 years, they still fussing about the same stuff. Still talking about the same old, same old. Still acting like ain't nothing ever changed. <clears throat> Living in the same cycles of life. And all that time I spend listening to their garbage, I can spend talking to my God. All that time on the phone, wasting time with meaningless people and just crazy conversation, I'm not there no more. I'm, I'm not there no more. Mr. Stokes, I'm not there no more. And so I've released that stuff, those people, those places, those things. And here's what I've done. done something productive with my time and my attention. And the most productive thing you can do is give it to God. Give that time. Give that space to God. Be open to him enough. First week, we, we discovered that you got to have faith to receive. Second week, we discovered that we must be postured to receive. Last week, we talked about being connected to receive. But can I tell you, we sum it up today with making sure we give God the space to receive all that we need from him. God wants to do some great things in this next level of your life, in this next season of your life. You got to give him the space to do it. You got to give him the space to do it. You, you got to make sure you give God the space he deserves. Because here it is, he deserves it. And the only way you can get it is if you make space for him to do it. Don't live your life cluttered. Don't live your life cluttered. 
Some of us are spiritual hoarders. Yes, some of us are spiritual hoarders. You ever watch that show, Hoarding, Buried Alive? Folk, houses is nasty and filled from top to bottom. This one thing I want, one, one woman had about a, a hundred Christmas trees in her house. What you gonna do with all those Christmas trees? Some of our spirits are cluttered. We're spiritual hoarders. We have become spiritual hoarders. We're, we're hoarding everything in our spirit. Our spirits are clogged up, filled up with junk and mess and stuff we're holding on to. Tell somebody it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Time to free it so that you can enter into the spaces that God have intended for your life. We've been singing a song over these last four weeks. I asked Elder Strong to come share with us today. Thank you so much, my brother. He wrote this song over 20 years ago. And the Lord has been blessing him, going all around this country singing this song. We've been singing it, but it's his song. Can't nobody sing it like him. Listen, those of you in the house, you know this song. We've been singing the last four weeks. Elder Strong, I've been trying to sing your song. I've been trying to sing your song, but I can't sing it like Elder Strong. But y'all know the song. My hands are lifted up. Elder Strong wrote this song over 20 years ago. Lord's been blessing him going all around this country singing this song. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. Do you need anything from God? A blessing from you. A blessing from him. Oh, 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 a blessing from you. So I can reach you the better. Break me, make me, shape me, mold me. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. I'm a lesson from you. Can I say it again? Separate me, make me, shape me, mold me. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. From you. Can we say it together? My hands, my hands are lifted up. Yeah. Come on, my heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. Whatever you need, God has it for you to do. Come on, say it again. Can somebody open 
up your mouth and shout in this place. My hands are lifted up. That's the position of surrender. Ooh, my hands are lifted up. That means not my will, but your will be done. Oh, my hands are lifted up. That's when the tide of the battle changed when I gave it to God. Oh, God, my kids are lifted up. Oh, Lord, Lord. Every person that means that, let's say it together. No music, my hands, come on. My heart is ready to receive. Yeah. My heart is ready to receive. Blessing from you. A blessing from you. Mm, it's already wrapped and packaged for you. All you gotta do is receive it. A blessing from you. One more time. My hands uplifted up high. A blessing from you. Oh, a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Open your mouth if you're ready to give what it has for you. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Praise him for the blessing. Praise him for the breakthrough. Praise him for the healing. Praise him for the miracle. Praise him for the deliverance. Praise him for doing what he said he would do. Oh, yes.
house. The sound of overflow in this house. Yes, sir. Shout, I'm ready. Somebody ought to declare in this house, I'm ready. Husband, get us ready. And we on our way to Bethel. Tell somebody, we on our way to Bethel. On our way to Bethel. We on our way to Bethel. Yes, sir. Gracious Father, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for how you blessed us and kept us. And you've been right there with us every step of the journey. We say thank you, God. All these last four weeks you've been teaching us, giving us the road map on how to get where you're taking us to. Now, Father, we pray that you continue to sustain us for the journey as we embark upon a new destination in you. Sustain us for the journey as we embark upon a new place in you. God, keep us in the midst of it all. Keep us humble. Keep us strong. Yet keep us confident in the fact that you're right there with us right here with us and wherever you lead us you're going to be there and we thank you God continue to take our minds and you mold it and shape it take our heart and mold it and shape it we remain on the potter's wheel have your way in us and through us and it's in Jesus name that we pray and together we say amen amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We'd be remiss if we have surpassed the time of offering the Lord Jesus Christ to you, my brother, my sister. The doors of our Father's house are open even now because we can do all the singing and shouting. Yet we want to make sure you're saved, you're connected to God. You're covered under the umbrella of faith where you're able to stand, share, in the midst of all that you're going through because you have a Savior who's right here with us every step of the journey. If, if you're sharing in the physical building or even in the virtual sanctuary this morning, from the confines of your home, riding in your car, at work, wherever you are, Accept Jesus as your Savior. Make sure you know him today. Make sure you have him today. As, as the love of your soul. As your all and your all. Make sure this moment, Jesus belongs to you. And you belong to Jesus. Do me a favor, ask your neighbor, your left, your right. Ask neighbor, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're in the virtual sanctuary, we extend that same love of Christ to you. Some of the information is scrolling on the bottom of your screen where you can connect with us. 
share with us here at Harvest. So maybe you're saved and you need a church home where you can grow in your fellowship and your connection with Christ. Christ wants us to come to his house to grow in him in our faith, our understanding. No need that you being saved and never going to church. Stay connected. Stay connected to a church home. Don't walk around spiritually uncovered, but be connected to a group of believers where you can grow in your faith. That's you, my brother, my sister. Make that election sure today. Make that decision today. Connect with us here at the heart. Father, we thank you for those who may have made decisions today in the virtual sanctuary, even now we pray that you would undergird them and sustain them. We pray, Father, that you put a hedge all around them. Give them all that they need as they have made a decision to share the rest of their lives with you. We bless you and we thank you for this moment in time. And we give you praise and thanksgiving. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're preparing to be dismissed from this place. God bless you, Greater Harvest. I love you all. Those of you who shared with us in person and even those in the virtual sanctuary, I love you. God blessings be upon of you. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Thank God for the presence of Elder Jamel Strong sharing with us this day. Thank you so much, Elder. Let's stand to our feet. Don't forget the announcements that went forth early in our town share together. Don't forget these announcements that went forth early in our town share together. Stay connected to Harvard. God bless you. Well, I'm praying for you. Tell somebody, your pastor's praying for you. present you faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy to the only wise father be glory majesty dominion and power from this moment on even forevermore and together we declare I receive it I receive it I receive it in Jesus name God bless you go the peace of the Lord Jesus